So welcome back to the R8 and welcome back to a beautiful day in Sydney. So you remember in the last video I was mentioning the issue with the clutch bite point and particularly in sport mode I was noticing that when it changed gear there was a slight slippage before the clutch actually engaged properly. It's a bit of a problem with the clutch in sport mode it just is slipping just a tiny bit so it needs a, an adjustment the kiss point as it's called I've got quite a bit of experience with these automated manual gearboxes uh, like the Artronic which is essentially the same transmission um, which is in the Maserati Gran Turismo and the Lamborghini uh, Gallardo. If you want to check back on my video that I did a while ago where I went through all the different types of automatic transmission and how they worked, basically what you've got in this car is a manual transmission. It's the same gearbox as the manual R8, except instead of having mechanical linkages to a gear lever, it has hydraulic actuators which are controlled by a computer. And instead of having a clutch pedal connected to the clutch, you have a hydraulic actuator connected to the clutch plate. So basically the computer is doing the, the shifting and also the control of the clutch plate. Obviously it needs to be very carefully adjusted so that the bite point of the clutch is exactly right so that it can pull away smoothly and it can change gear smoothly. And clearly that wasn't quite right on the car as I got it back. That was probably due to the fact that the transmission control unit was replaced as part of the repair works uh, after the water damage. So I'm sure you've all seen these OBD2 scanners, which you can pick up quite cheaply. Um, they're often either connected to a, a handheld device or they can be Bluetooth or wireless and you can get an app for your phone. So that basically will allow you to read and reset generic OBD2 codes, OBD standing for Onboard Diagnostics. But if you get the specific manufacturer's diagnostic tool, it allows you to go into every single control module in the car. So for the Volkswagen Audi Group, there's a company called Rostec, I'll put a link in the description. They supply an OBD2 diagnostic tool which plugs into the, the port on your car and also connects to a laptop via USB. Then you can download the software from the Rostec site, connects up to this uh, diagnostic probe and you basically have access to all the control modules on the entire car. So we're here at Davidson Park uh, with the R8 looking absolutely beautiful and the sunset on the trees in the distance there looks uh, pretty amazing. So I'm gonna show you how you can make some quite incredible changes and actually do proper maintenance to your car using just that diagnostic tool and a laptop. So this is the Hex V2 diagnostic tool from Rostec. Basically it has your standard OBD2 port here and it has a USB type A port on the other end. As with most of these OBD ports, you actually plug it in. There's a socket under here. There we go. So that's just a matter of plugging it in to a Windows PC. This is your basic screen. You can choose whichever control module you wish, wish to access directly from here. And they are grouped by category, drivetrain, chassis, comfort and convenience, electronics, electronics 2. Not all of these control modules are installed in every vehicle, but this basically gives you the list of modules that are installed in your vehicle. The next tab just undertakes an auto scan, which is quite useful to see which modules you've got installed. So we'll just start that and it's, you can see that it goes through each of the control modules recording the 
fault codes, if any, in that particular module. So we'll just let that finish. And it's just gone through the ESP module, which is why the ESP fault just bleeped up. One eternity later. Okay, so there we go. Um, you can see that it has produced a report here. You can scroll down and you can see all the various modules which it has interrogated. Anything that you do here, you can actually add to the log so you can look at it later, which is really useful. So if you want to have a look at a particular control module, select control module. And the one that we were looking at then was central convenience, which is this one here, 46. So then you've got some basic functions on the left, fault codes. So it's showing three fault codes, function request sliding roof. Okay, well, there's no sliding roof. So that means there is a, a coding error here, which is making it think that there should be a sliding roof. Um, key one, luggage compartment light. Okay, well, there's no luggage compartment either, technically. I don't know whether it's the front luggage compartment. So if we go back, we can look at the coding options. Now, this one has a long coding system where every digit of this long number here basically represents some function in the car. So I haven't yet got round to de deciphering this long coding, but if we look at the helper, you can see that it's looking at the first two digits of this number here, and it's explaining that bit three is dealing with unlocking after removing key from ignition, automatic locking after 15 kilometers an hour. So each of these individual numbers will refer to a particular function on the car and they can be changed individually. I think you can begin to see just how powerful and also how dangerous <laughs> this can be. Previously I did change the backup camera coding because it was coded incorrectly. So if we look at the coding You'll see here that this is a much simpler code. It's just got um, seven digits. And you can see the instructions here. Basically, it tells you what you need to do. The first digit is the manufacturer, zero or one. It doesn't matter, Audi. Uh, the market is the second digit, rest of the world. Um, trailer and parking system, you have to add one onto that for a trailer hitch or an optical parking system. So these last two digits, one, two, designate an Audi R8. Those two digits were incorrect, so I was able to change those to correctly code the rear view camera. Not sure that it makes any difference, but best to be right than not. The problem that I had was with the clutch kiss point, which is the point at which the two clutch plates actually engage and cause the vehicle to move forward. So if we go into automatic transmission, there is, apart from coding, we can look at the basic settings. And in the basic settings, there is an option here to open a pull down menu and look at documented basic settings. So one of the ones that you can see here, basic setting kiss point. So it looks like we're not able to do the basic setting, the kiss point again, but um, I was able to run another um, configuration or um, settings program here. Um, I'm not sure I want to do it again, but um, in the selector lever, the basic settings selector lever, the gearbox goes through a cycle of actually engaging and disengaging gears so that um, it can adjust the various components in the gearbox. There was an example of it going through a, a selector lever um, adjustment. It kind of scared the crap out of me because it came up with a gearbox error, but I think it's working now. <laughs> so that's why I'm saying it's dangerous because it is freaking dangerous. Now that scared the crap out of me because I came up with a um, gearbox error, then it wouldn't shift. So you have to actually go through the, the, the full procedure 
and once it comes out of the full procedure your gearbox becomes active again um, so anyway if you wanted to do that you would go into the setting kiss point the basic setting kiss point and there's a procedure where you have the engine running the gearbox in neutral and the clutch will adjust itself until the um, the gearbox shaft starts to turn and then it knows that the two clutch plates have have made contact and that's how it adjusts um, the kiss point it's pretty awesome really so it gives you the instructions here ignition on engine off gear selector lever in neutral which it is handbrake applied keep brake pedal depressed during basic settings duration about two minutes successfully with MVB 002 that's measuring block I think new values are saved after ignition off that basically shows what can be done the the real um, the, the power of it and also the the complete danger of it as well because it scares the crap out of you if you if you do something wrong you can really screw up your car so I hope you've enjoyed that video um, I'm sorry I wasn't able to show you some of that diagnostic stuff and adjustment stuff actually working. Um, I think it must have a system in it where it's, whereby it stops you doing it too frequently or after, too quickly after it's been done before. So unfortunately I wasn't able to show you, but I hope you um, could get an idea of the absolute you know, power <laughs> of that software and the, the danger of it and the, you know, what you can do with it. So um, you do need to know what you're doing. Um, but I was able to adjust the uh, clutch kiss point and uh, that actually made the car drive a hell of a lot better. So I'm going to do a lot more research on this particular piece of software, also on the various control modules, um, see what other things you can tweak, uh, might be quite fun. Anyway, thanks for watching, hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy it, don't forget to smash that like. It'd be great to have you as a subscriber and hit that notification bell. Um, you can follow me on Instagram at mguy.tv or Twitter at mguy underscore TV. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now. Yeah.